Good morning, good evening, good night, folks. This is your Football Scout 365 host, Woody Massey, and I'm here with Coach Brandon Lumberg. What's up, man? It's been a crazy doing, long man? week. I know, I know, but we're squeezing it in, going over our running back big board. And as always, you can check out the top six of these prospects here on the channel on After Further Review. Uh, we did Kenneth Walker. We've done Brees Hall. We did Zamir White, James Cook. Uh, and then we did Isaiah Spiller and Rashad White. Yeah. Yeah, nice little collection there. Deep if dives. we were going to do another one of two, who would we do? We'd probably do Damian Pierce. Yeah, he's and, a hot name out there. And your boy. Maybe as Hassan always. Haskins. Yeah, your boy, your Michigan boy. I'd, I'd imagine we squeeze him in there. Had a yeah. hell of a season. Can't deny it. Yeah, he did. Um... So let's talk about it. Let's talk about first. Let's talk about the comparisons that we did for each guy here at the top of the show. Uh, Kenneth Walker. Now, his we've actually grown on a little bit here. I've fallen more in love with Kenneth Walker as time has gone on, and I've watched more and more film. Like the guy is, he reminds me of. Well, we initially said the way he's patient and picking a hole. And finding the right hole and bursting out. Everybody's favorite comp. Le- 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 Le'Veon Bell, exactly. Yeah. Because he's a patient runner. But after further review, and thanks to a uh, guy on uh, who commented on the Kenneth Walker video, yeah. I went back and looked. He does remind me a little bit of a, lo- a young LaDamian Tomlinson. Like he's yeah. shorter, finds the hole, hits it at full speed. I don't hate it. I don't hate it because I really I think he could be that good. I think he could throw up like a 1,400 yard year. At some point in his career or something. Absolutely. Yeah. Like he is, he's, look, I've been pretty much from start to finish. I haven't wavered. I almost wavered a little bit uh, during the combine when Brees Hall ran his 40 yard dash. And I'm thinking, wow, <laughs> he's a lot faster than what I expected him to be. Uh, but then Kenneth Walker also ran a 4.38, uh, which I'm like, okay, that, that checks out. It's 1A and 1B, Kenneth Walker top guy on the board for us for me i don't know for you as well woody i mean would you say if you oh if you kenneth were... walker is i have him listen Brees hall he's the one like he's had an amazing combine his stock has just grown and grown and grown yeah. there is no nothing not to like yeah i was a little bit of a hater i looked at when we looked at his film i was like is this going to translate against nfl competition at least in the big 10 we know you oh, know yeah. what i mean yeah he, we know there's a certain level of competition in the Big Ten. Yeah. Um, but I think Brees Hall is going to be good, too. But I just think Kenneth Walker has the je ne sais quoi, you know? <laughs> like yeah, that, I mean, that special quality in yeah, a running back that makes a guy a home run hitter. And, and when we get to this, you know, the numbers that we always like to talk about, you'll see exactly what, that, what we're talking about or what Woody's talking about here. That special ingredient um, shows up in the numbers. Now and you can see it. Brees Hall, you had a really interesting comparison uh, to uh, like a bit of a David Johnson comparison on how much he's built. Like he can run, catch the ball in the backfield, but be a great goal line runner as well. You even slid like a, in between David Johnson and Beanie Wells. Yeah, the Beanie That's Wells. Comp. Yeah, just Which, the, it was the style. I don't hate that. The way yeah. he leans when he's running. Yeah, kind of gave sure. me the Beanie. Yeah, gave me a I Beanie Wells uh, thought. And then uh, who did we do next? We did Zamir White and, so and James Cook. Cook. Oh yeah, James Cook, the uh, Georgia now, duo. We got to talk about Zamir White. Zamir White, you were very high on Zamir White. Here's my thing with with these Georgia running backs, and especially the, the way that he's built. The 40 time that he put up, in addition to that at the combine, kind of sold me a little bit more as well. But you know, his play style, his frame in general, kind of reminded me of Josh Jacobs or the Damian Harris types that you're seeing in the league now. Which those are very good running backs. Uh, but to throw out there that the guy posted a 4-4-2-40. He was actually at a faster 40 than his teammate James Cook, which is completely insane. And on tape, you can see it. Like, when you watch his film, the way that he brings the defense and gets separation on long runs, he can also run through arm tackles, the contact balance, and all that stuff is there. Those are the things that that you look at when you're looking at the film. He, he didn't put up gouty numbers. He's not putting up, you know, Kenneth Walker numbers or Brees Hall numbers. Lacking in the receiving area, especially, 
but he did show on tape that he could do it. Same thing with Kenneth Walker. We, you know, we didn't even discuss that a second ago. You know, that's the big difference between Bre- Brees Hall is the more proven pass catcher out of the backfield. Yeah, I just think that was more Michigan State not using him. Yeah, though, you're right. In the past, that's game. that's a hundred percent right. But when they did, he made plays. Yeah, he showed that he could do it. Screens, exactly. you know, little out routes out of the backfield, and, and once things again, of that nature. Running backs, that's like the one thing, like I'd say, compared to NBA, you can teach shooting to a certain extent. Like there's guys that come into the league that can't shoot that end up being that's their expertise. They turn into corner three-point shooters. Sean Elliott, perfect example. He was a defensive stopper for the Spurs for years. And over the years, because on offense, they were like, go stand in that corner. He got good at one of the best three corner three-point shooters in the league. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just you do what you have to, and a great athlete will learn what he needs to do to be great in the NFL. What about Shaq? Shaq got better free throws. Shaq didn't need to. <laughs> That's the thing. Shaq was so dominant. It was like, I can miss 40% of these. Years. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm the great philosopher. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, after uh, the Zamir White, let's talk about you have Isaiah Spiller. You actually, you kind of have him, Isaiah Spiller and Zamir White, flipping a little bit. I think Zamir White's the better athlete, but Isaiah Spiller, if you're looking for consistency, but there is a lot of wear and tear on three straight seasons of being like pretty much the main rusher in Texas. Yeah, he uh, he kind of like skipped out on his 40, like at every opportunity to really do it. So he didn't run one at his pro day. He didn't do anything at the combine. So... I don't know. I, I'm not worried. Super worried about his forty. Yeah, he definitely saw he had speed to break away in the SEC. So he's not going to be that vision. slow at the end of the day. He's yeah. an angry runner, and our comparison for him was uh, J- a young Jeremy Hill. Yeah, and the Adrian Peterson is what he models his game yeah, after as well. So Jeremy Hill is probably a better comparison of yeah how angry. That's runs. true. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, my personal favorite late round steal, I think this guy's going to be taken somewhere in the third to fifth area. And, uh, you know, they call me a Pac-12 homer here on the podcast, which is fine. This but one of my favorites, I think, too. I think if Rashad White, one of the best stories in the draft, for sure. I think if Rashad White gets taken by an offensive coordinator with a vision, like imagine if the Chiefs grabbed Rashad White in the fifth round. Yeah, you know what I mean? They've been looking for that receiving back. I would say Atlanta, maybe, depending yeah. on where they land. I think um, Cordero Patterson, but yeah. But could you imagine, okay, well, Cordero, when you eventually may move on from him, you yeah. got the next. Gives you a lot of flexibility. We talked about that, you know, like the running back position. I, I sent you guys the text, the, the random text thought that I had where I'm like, hey, Saquon Barkley could be like a Debo Samuel if you really wanted to use him yeah. in that way. Now, I'm not saying Rashad White's that same kind of athlete, the the fluidity that Well, uh, Barkley the guy has. I compared him to, he caught a lot of balls, which was Matt Forte. Because he has that yeah. upward running style, the one cut slash through the defense when he's running, and uh, not afraid of contact, but he will try. Like he he's a good receiver. You can line him out in the slot. You you saw a lot of plays where they ran wide receiver screens from. He even caught the ball down the field. Yep. He's a good he's a good receiver out of the backfield, and he just requires a, res, a creative mind. I think Rashad White's the best receiver. I, James Cook has a good argument for being one of the best receivers out mm-hmm. of the backfield. Rashad White has the ability to be the best receiver in this class. I think personally he is. Like I think that what he had shown on tape, the amount of usage. Look, that's what I love about what Arizona State did is they have a guy that they can use like that and they weren't afraid to use him like that. A lot of schools just don't do it. All right, well, let's dive into your rankings here just for everybody. So... People going into dynasty drafts or just interested in the draft at all. Positional ranking by ceiling grade. And if you want to see this breakdown in print, Brandon has it posted on the Football Scout 365 website. Check it out. Um, but positional ranking by ceiling grade. That means this is these are the guys that you think could have the potential to be the highest yep. rated, correct? So it flips them around a little bit. Because we both love Rashad White so much. You actually have him going from fifth to third here if he lands in the right area that's part of the posi- the ceiling like yeah a guy a running back has to land 
with a guy with vision, someone who knows how to use his tools and uses them yeah. well. And Rashad yeah. White is that guy. Because if he just goes into a classic offense, it's not going to work. Well, he, I mean, look at the NFL running back now. It's pretty simple, right? Like if you're in a fantasy mindset, fantasy mm-hmm. football mindset, you're looking for the PPR, right? You're looking 100%. for the guy who's going to catch passes and, and get as much volume as possible. Rashad White checks that box. Like he is one of those guys. He he checks that box more than Kenneth Walker does. And he might be a sneaky guy for you guys in fantasy drafts because – a lot of people sleep on West Coast rookies because the games are on later. They're just yeah. the, with the way the college football TV deals work. You just don't see a lot of West Coast guys on the East Coast. Yeah. And, but, but the other way around, you see a lot of East Coast guys on the West Coast. So it's almost a little bit of an advantage of look where Rashad White lands. If he lands in the right spot, it could be dangerous. I do want to remind everybody that this is a guy who was a zero star recruit. In high school, I have to throw that out there again. I, I want everyone to know who doesn't know a zero star recruit coming out of high school ends up at a junior college eventually before he ends up at Arizona State. I love and it. I consider him to be potentially the third best <laughs> running back in this draft class. So we talked about Arizona as a spot that is very interesting. They just lost Chase Edmonds. They yep. were bringing in Daryl Williams to talk on free agency. There's been no signing, though, which I think is a great pickup for them actually but taking Rashad White in the middle rounds yeah hometown boy he just he literally played at Arizona State and the way I mean Cliff Kingsbury love him or hate him he's at least creative with where he yeah. likes to line people up Rashad White might be a great fit there like Chase Edmonds was yeah and look Teams that are out there, the NFL right now, teams that are getting some of the best production and value at the running back position, it's not necessarily in the early rounds. So these guys, like a guy like Rashad White or even Damian Pierce, you, you end up getting a guy like that in the third round or later, potentially. Tell That's us more about incredible Damian Pierce. Value. So Damian Pierce, I mean, his ascension more or less started to happen at the Senior Bowl. Florida... Florida vastly underutilized him. They didn't really, but he's just, he's a pounder between the tackles. He's kind of, I categorized, I categorized him more with the Hassan Haskins uh, style role, going to be a power runner at the NFL level. But his ascension has really, really started to happen during the senior bowl practices. And, and during that week and going into that game, a lot of scouts really believe that this guy has some of the some of more potential than some of the guys that we've even talked about for that matter to kind of move into the realm of maybe the third best back. So he is he's a guy to keep an eye on for sure. Damian Pierce it's been a long history. Florida has done this even through different coaches. They've been a a oh, yeah. uh, committee back. Back. Yeah. Back. You never see too much of one guy. So sometimes guys will sneak up on you from Florida because you just haven't seen a ton of workload. And that's, I think, what we're seeing at the Senior Bowl here. Yeah, that's 100% true. Um, now let's take a look at just some statistics to close it out. Uh, let's look at yards after contact, which I think is one of the most important stats in drafting a running back. And yeah. that goes against my Rashad White theory because he actually didn't have the greatest – Yards after contact numbers, but they also lined him up in a variety of different ways. And sometimes screens that are turned into running plays because they're a little bit behind the quarterback. Yep. There's complications there with the stats. There's an asterisk there. But my boy Kenneth Walker shines in this. Yeah, thousand yards after contact. <laughs> it's insane, man. It's insane. Like uh, it just goes to show, like he's one of those players that can you know overcome a bad offensive line, mm-hmm. like. Michigan State didn't necessarily have the worst offensive line, but clearly he was getting – there were moments where he was getting hit in the backfield, bouncing off and finding a crease and, and turning it into something, right? Like, and not just against teams who were not bad teams. I mean, he's doing it against Michigan, you know? Yeah, so it, exactly. it's a big deal when you see that on tape. And this Michigan defense, like, let's talk about it, was no joke. We're talking right. about he destroyed a line with the number one <laughs> overall pick. It and, was a and, great run defender. In this, in a sign of a great running back, is how well they play late. So as the game goes on, game goes they on. tend to get better. And this dude Those was making Henry plays. Yeah, yeah, they were down two scores, and this guy was. They were still run. They didn't give up on the run, and that's how they came back. Was with him making hitting big plays. 
Uh, tell me about Tyler Batty from Mizzou. Yeah, so uh, Beatty from Mizzou, good receiver, obviously, out of the backfield. One of the things that you have to pay attention to, and we just talked about it, the Big Ten being as competitive as it is, anytime yeah. you see numbers from a guy where they rank very highly and they're playing in a premier conference such as mm -hmm. the SEC or the Big Ten, you have to consider them. He's one of the guys that I'm, I have listed as like my three to watch. Keep an eye on because this guy could be something. I mean, not only is he a guy who can absorb contact out of the backfield and things of that nature, but he's a good receiver out of the backfield. So definitely highly productive in the SEC at a school that, you know, they're not, they're not premier. Missouri has not been that great. Well, we he's... talked about him being a great receiver. He got a lot of targets, but this man, yep. he was second in explosive run plays. Yeah. And that's phenomenal. Like, I mean, look, you're seeing him pop up and that's why I have him listed as three to watch because every show we've ever done where we've started to feature the stats, you see him show up in yards after contact, explosive plays. And that's you know, where you was... get the sneaky guys late. Like yeah. we saw last year, this literally saved the Bucks heading into the playoffs. They drafted uh, Kershawn Vaughn in the, yeah. what, third round a few years ago. Hasn't even touched the field. I picked him up in a dynasty league because I was like, oh, this guy led the SEC in yards after contact. And he's just been sitting there on the bench. Bam, Ronald Jones goes out. Leonard Fournette goes out. All yeah. of a sudden, he's thrown in a starting role. He missed – he didn't – he missed a – dropped a pass – so he kind of <laughs> fell into Brady's doghouse, but he was running very well. Yeah, yeah, he did. He looked he looked pretty good, and hopefully he can overcome whatever ails him in practice to not give him that opportunity. And, and hey, look, no Ronald Jones now. So, I mean, there's an yeah. opportunity potentially for him to uh, get into some sort of a committee battle with Leonard Fournette and, and whoever else they have. But I want to throw it out there, 4 4 5 40 at the Combine. So he's no slouch in terms of that, so... Now, let's talk about a guy that goes into the passing targets and versatility here. Uh, Brian Robinson Jr., normally an yes. Alabama back that has put up numbers like Brian Robinson Jr., would be much higher in the draft talk. But the, yeah. the last guy we saw that kind of slipped like this, Damien Harris was a little underappreciated right. coming in the draft, but that was more so because of his size, I think. And then uh, another guy, Bo Scarborough. He put up great numbers yeah. at Alabama, and he, he definitely slipped. So do you see Brian Robinson falling in that range of, like, maybe a six-round pick late in the draft? I mean, it, you know, the, the way people view him is, is based on, you know, what is his ability as a receiver coming out of the backfield. I mean, he runs – he had a 4-5, uh, 3-40 at the NFL Combine. So you have to consider that. That's solid. That's a good 40 time for for a back of, of his size and calorie 6'2", 225. So he gives you a little bit of the Najee Harris vibes a little mm -hmm. bit. He filled that role really, really well uh, this past season at Alabama. So I do I feel like, you know, he could fall somewhere in that range or he could go earlier. It's eye of the beholder situation. What team really team different teams value different players differently. And, you know, he's one of those guys that could sneak up and, and, and go a lot earlier than even what I think he has the ability to do, you know, some Najee Harris style stuff. You yeah. Know, at the NFL level. Uh, all right. Let's talk about play style and scheme fit. We're going to, I'm going to throw some names at you. You can go see this once again on Brandon's article, uh, on football scout, 365.com. Kenneth Walker, what kind of scheme does this guy need to land in to be successful? Uh, zone scheme. He, obviously, he's an elusive runner. Great really contact is. balance. Mm -hmm. The speed is there. I mean, he he shows you a lot of stuff. A West um, Coast offense would really fit Kenneth Walker. Yeah. And, and one thing, too, like, you know, let's see what he can do as a receiver a little bit more, even if it's just at or near the line of scrimmage when he's making catches. We see that on film, the the limited usage as a receiver. He was able to show us some stuff, whether it was a screen or just a quick dump down or whatever here and there. But that that would benefit him well, even in a, in a West Coast scheme. Brees Hall, you see in the same type of scheme, right? Yeah. Yeah. So basically what this comes from is like how much usage they had um, in college just this past season. So kind of looking at it like zone or gap scheme. How much usage usage do they have now? All these players have at some point probably ran some sort of a gap scheme, right? Yeah. Uh, Brees Hall, though, 
Thank, yep. thank the great Gary Kubiak for making zone schemes so universal. I know, right? So <laughs> zone scheme, which is so popular already, inside, outside zone in the NFL, everybody's doing it. But Brees Hall gave us a larger sample size, obviously, as a three down back in terms of a pass catcher. So gives you the three down versatility. But, you know, by, judging by his 40 time that we had just witnessed at the Combine, a lot faster than than some people might have expected. You know, posting a four three nine is pretty phenomenal. So, yeah, I think he's a three down player at the NFL level for sure. Now, this is interesting to me. I didn't see him as a three down player, even though he did catch some balls. He has decent hands. I don't know about the route running, but Isaiah Spiller, you have put down as a three down player yeah. as well. I just think when you look at guys like him, he's six one, two fifteen ish. Um, anytime you get a guy that's in that range, they give you three down versatility, not just as a receiver, but as a blocker as well. So like, those are things that you have to incorporate in there. He's got the size to kind of hang in there and be on the field more. Um, so you're not going to really be worried about pulling him off the field to throw another guy out there, unless you do have a phenomenal receiver that you want to throw out there as well. But he has the, the ability to do it. Mm-hmm. All right. Tell me about Rashad White. Now, this is the one where it gets a little spicy. Obviously, zone, gap, but, like, what type of offense really, like, a passing-oriented offense? He looks for it. Obviously, not a team that's taking a ton of shots downfield. You want somebody that's creative, a lot of, a lot of moving pieces. Yeah, so yeah, the Chiefs, we've already talked about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, perfect. I mean, the 49ers, they never, you know, waver on taking another one, right? They'll find yeah. a way to get another running back, I'm sure, in this draft. You know, if the, we've seen the Carolina Panthers thinking about moving on from Christian McCaffrey a bunch. Like, if the, him and Chuba Hubbard, or Chuba that's, Hubbard, excuse me, that's real. A nice little combo, too, because that's something that we saw was lacking in their offense when Christian went out. Chuba was good running the ball, but he wasn't the best at catching the ball out of the backfield. The, the Falcons showed great creativity with Cordero Patterson. Don't mm-hmm. discount that at all. You know, you had already brought up the Cardinals being a potential landing spot for a guy like him. That'd be huge. Even the Buccaneers? Yeah. Because they lost Ronald Jones. G- yeah. I don't think Gio Bernard is coming back. Leonard Fournette's going to catch a lot of balls this year. He's getting paid to catch a lot of balls. But we saw they are – Vaughn Brady's probably a little on the tippy toes throwing the ball to Vaughn, having Rashad White being able yeah. to throw him out there. Whew. That'd be instant. Like his uh, draft stock in fantasy would just boop yeah. through the roof. Mm-hmm, Everybody on the sure. planet. So, yep. Uh, all right. Let's talk about to close it out. Well, obviously, first, let's go over your big board, your official big board, one through five. You got Kenneth Walker, first and second round pick, Brees Hall, first and second round pick. Zamir White, the power bat. You have him in second to fifth round. So that's a big area there. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Well, because you see him as a second round value, but not everyone could. has caught up to it yet. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like anywhere within three to five technically would be good, but I could see him going late, second round somewhere. We're going to be doing a mock draft. Obviously, most of these guys won't be in our one round mock them, draft. Yeah, next it's going to be great. Maybe Can't Kenneth wait. Walker or Brees Hall fall into that first round. Who knows? But uh, then, And then to close it out, you had Isaiah Spiller – Two to four round area and Rashad White two to five. I think Rashad White falls. I'd be surprised if someone reached, but if if they did, because I feel like teams think they can get him at a major discount. Coming out, of they might stay, or somebody really loves him, and yeah. that's what you're that's what you're hoping for. You know, is is somebody that really loves him. All right, so you close out your article on FootballScout365.com with three guys to watch. That you yeah. think there's a possibility that these guys might end up doing something. Like we we saw Elijah Mitchell. He was a fifth round pick last year. Yeah. And he almost he just he was pretty much the 49ers best running back as a rookie. You know? And yeah, uh that's... the Bears, Khalil Herbert. Dave Montgomery goes out. That's Man, true, yeah. All of a sudden Herbert's rushing for a hundred yards and he was what, like a six round pick? I'll throw this out you there. You literally and... told me before my uh draft in my sixteen team dynasty draft, you're like <laughs> Hey, if you see like Khalil Herbert sitting around <laughs> there, go ahead. You're like, who? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and then bam. Khalil, I who? see this guy rushing for 120 yards. I'm like, damn it, Brandon. <laughs> like, it's sneaky stuff like that. Like, honestly, 
I have Julius Chestnut on this list. He's he's kind of like my sneaky favorite from Sacred Heart. Now, I'm not giving any guarantees to this. I was more I literally to- looked at you before the show and I was like, did he play for a hospital? <laughs> yeah, right? Sacred Heart <laughs> hospital? No, but seriously, I mean, he's 5'10 or 5'11, excuse me, 228 pounds. Uh, he did participate in a pro day. Now, I was kind of digging. I had to dig for this information, but he went to UConn's pro day and participated. He ran a 4-4. Wow. Four- a 447 and a 449 at Pro Day. So, but on his tape, you see a player who catches up the ball out of the backfield really well, and they utilize him in a lot of different ways like that. Uh, so he's got some versatility to his game. So keep an eye on him. But the thing about like Elijah Mitchell, I wanted to point out uh, since you brought that up, him landing in San Francisco and then looking at his tape at Louisiana, and you're like, okay, this is like the perfect one cut runner out of the backfield, and he has 44 four speed, you know. Last year, I thought, okay, when they drafted uh, him and uh, Trey Sermon at the same time, I thought that'd be the great one-two punch. But I thought Mitchell was like the perfect Raheem Mostert replacement. And it just turns out that that's pretty much what the case is without Sermon obviously making too much of the cut. We don't know what he's going to turn into this year. But Debo Samuel jumped in there too, by the way, and stole a lot of the thunder from that opportunity. Totally. Uh, Let's talk about – we already talked about Tyler Beatty. There's one other guy, uh, shout out to the Mormons here, the running back from the Zach Wilson era, now the Jets quarterback. He got Tyler Al- Algier. Yeah, he's uh, 5'11", 224. He didn't blow anybody away at the combine in terms of his 40. He was 4'6", 40. Um, but again, this is a guy that shows up in all the numbers that we go over. So if you go back and you look and at all... running back is one of the only positions to where you cannot... You could not even register on the elite physical scale, but with the proper vision, you can be a good running back. And that's what he is. That that's exactly it. He's a zone. He's gonna, you know, flourish in a zone based scheme. He's got good vision. Those are the things that you look for. And then, like I said, look at the numbers. Look at the tape. Ignore the forty. There was a guy drafted a couple years ago, James Robinson, to the Jaguars that I overlooked. Because I'm like, man, four six four forty is not very fast. So, but sometimes you got to flip on the tape, just kind of reevaluate it. And this guy shows that even with a four six forty, he's he's got the good vision. He can get the job done. But uh, one of the comparisons that I did find on him was Chubba Hubbard. I, I like you know, Chubba Hubbard coming out of Oklahoma State. Yeah, yeah. I, th- was, I think a lot of I think the usage that they got out of him last year for a fourth round pick was great. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, but again, you know, I like some of these guys that at the back end like that, don't sleep on my guy, Hassan Haskins. You never know. He's not very fast. I don't have him listed in the, in the three to watch here, but definitely a guy to keep an eye on as well. I'm trying to think, is there anybody else that you, you could think of that's kind of sleep the top of my head? I mean, I think Brian Robinson Jr. Personally, if you get him in like the sixth round or the fifth round, that's a great value. Cause I, I just want a guy that can. I know I can throw him the ball or hand off the ball, and he's going to be serviceable. He may yeah. not – like, he had long plays. He was high up there in the explosive plays. But this isn't a guy that you're expecting to take it to the house from anywhere on the field. But I could be, you know, 20 yards here, 20 yards there. I, I don't think he's just a bad back. Nice guy to have yeah. on the roster. Do it all. And you never know. Someone could get injured. And behind the right offensive line, this guy could run for a healthy yardage per game, get some touchdowns. He's one of those guys you might just plug and play. Yeah. I know that what's going to end up happening as soon as I'm done editing all this is I'm going to start researching stuff again, and I'm going to come across a couple more guys that I'm going to want to talk about and then I'm not going to get to. But I like next year's running back class personally. I think there's some guys. Yeah, we're going to be, speaking of next year, working on some updates on the website, trying to make it fancier. So obviously Mm -hmm. we don't have a staff like a lot of other places do. So it's like, Real shorthanded in terms of the technology aspect, but trying to really simplify things and make it better. I want to be able to add the player, the player comps that Woody has been coming up with and things of that nature to just kind of be more creative on the website. So in the future, we're going to have some cool tools. It'll be free. You'll be able to just hop in there and kind of follow along with us. And we're going to be doing some fantasy videos, fantasy rankings, especially after the draft. Once like all the dust is settled, we're going to be doing reviews of teams drafts we might even yes. start going over each team's draft board and talking about it in depth um but also what we're going to start doing 
before the college football season next year, because we were going to come at you much earlier and get a lot of these guys' videos. There are going to be way more guys' videos before the draft next year. But we're going to do our list of people to watch, athletes, especially with all the transfers this year. College yeah. football is changing. It's a different different world because of all these guys in the transfer portals. You're going to be seeing a lot of random guys just pop up on the boards this year. So yeah. more than anything, this year is the Wild West of rookies. <laughs> you, you never know who's going to pop up this year. It's going to be interesting. It is. Yeah, I can't wait. I know – a lot of people are excited about next year already. People are, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like burning out from 2022s. Uh, I know we've been class. grinding, ready... son. Yeah, yeah, you may see we we've been doing YouTube for now a few months, but we've been doing audio before yeah. that, so you can go back and look at that. Yeah, that's real. Let's go back to last year's draft and listen to our hot takes. <laughs> right. Uh, Brandon nailed last year's draft 100. The only one that I think that you slept on a little bit. Was Jamar Chase? Because I did. I had did. Devontae Smith up there at the top ahead of him. Which isn't a bad I, pick. Devontae Smith is amazing. He's a yeah, but Chase is. And okay. you were super high on Jalen Waddle, who had one of the best rookie seasons yeah. ever as well. But I Jamar just, Chase, that was my taking own, that, that year off. Run. Yeah, that was it. Took a year Scared off. You a lot. But then Micah, Micah Parsons took a year off. I didn't really yeah. see. I didn't knock Micah Parsons as much as I did him. I was high on Micah you, Parsons. You love defense, man. Uh, it's it's got to be the Big Ten, man. I'm yeah. In the big country well, Jamar Chase, I, that was the only one I'll take credit to. I was all over that. Literally, everyone was saying, take a line and take a line. I was like, the last the time Bengals, we saw yes. these two guys together, they had the greatest college football season of all time. You have an opportunity to take a wide receiver for the – and the only reason this happened was because he stayed out a year. That's yeah. the only reason it happened, that he was available there. And I was like, no, you have to take the combo, the greatest wide receiver quarterback combo in college football history. Like, yeah. just, you have to do that. And now everybody wants to copy it. Yeah, no, I guarantee you we're going to see some stuff like that. Like, somehow the Bears are like, how do we get Garrett Wilson or Chris Olave with Justin Fields right both? now? <laughs> yeah, how do we get them both? Is there a way? <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in to Football Scout 365's Running back review show. I hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you seeing our new content soon.